up? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be talking about many issues the K-pop community has built. I've been a long time K-pop fan. 2018 was the first time I started getting into K-pop. And I have picked up on these issues over the 4 years. I think it's important to discuss these issues instead of pushing them away and never talking about them. Will that change anything? Well, no. The K-pop community will never be 100% perfect and I acknowledge that, but it can lead to awareness. Now before I really start, let me say a few disclaimers. Number 1. I am in no way hating on any idol, group, company, or platform in today's video. It is just to spread awareness and bring the issue's attention. Going along with that, disclaimer number 2 is that companies or platforms please do not sue me. Again, I am simply spreading awareness. I am in no way trying to defame anyone or dethrone a company. Last disclaimer, I am aware that this video may be longer than my normal videos. Please don't skip this video, especially since a lot of new people from my last video know about my channel. With that, let's get started. The first problem I will discuss is the weight expectations that K-pop companies and K-nets have built. On average, women in K-pop weigh 90 pounds while males weigh 130 pounds which is horrible. The normal average weight for women is 170 pounds and for males it's 190 pounds. Joshua and Minghao from 17. Bambam from God 7. 4 out of 5 of the ITZY members. All of Luna. The 3 youngest of TXT. And Jungwoo and Win Win from NCT 1 to 7 at the time. Are idols who are supposedly underweight. Underweight is when you are below the weight for your age or height. A horrible case of weight expectations is Momo from Twice. Once. She ate only ice cubes and was scared because she didn't know if she would survive. It's absurd that companies think these weights are normal and push their idols to be a specific weight instead of a healthy weight. Now I am not saying that they aren't healthy with being underweight. I'm not talking about that sort of health. Okay so I am going back to this script and I realized that I didn't talk about another case of an idol being underweight. Now what I am going to say is coming from either fans or aunties of Luna and I'll discuss more on that later. And so everything I am saying is just allegations. But people think that Lisa from Blackpink is a victim to the unhealthy weight due to how skinny and slender she is. You can see her ribs and very slender legs and arms. So it led people to believe she was underweight. Now along with this. People were making jokes about her body and saying things like Mrs. Bones and she's going to die soon. I'll get more into statements like these in the next section. This is a problem, especially on TikTok, where aunties of a certain idol or group will say the most disrespectful things either as a joke or because they are an asshole. Some of the things that are most commonly said by these aunties are pull a sully, pull a jong hyun, some sort of statement on Jimin's ED, and statements about Ti Hyung's grandma. Trigger warning for suicide but Sully and Jong Hyun are two idols who committed and these statements are ways of invalidating that. It is so beyond fucked up to say things like that. Suicide is no joke and the fact that people are using it as such invalidate so many people's feelings and Sully and Jong Hyun. I hope they are resting in peace. Now looking at the BTS statements. They are invalidating as well. They are not only invalidating someone's death and pain once again. They are invalidating people with EDs. EDs are a really hard thing to go through, and so by using it as a punk line can bring back so much trauma and hurt so many people. I feel bad that these idols pain is used as a joke by fans. Fan wars are, for the most part, self-explanatory, but in case you still don't know, I will explain it the best I can. Fan wars are when two or more fandoms butt heads and fight and it's usually army and someone else. On the outside. Fan wars seem harmless and just people have a disagreement, but there are worse things that have been said in fan wars. Fan wars go to a whole new level than the two previous sections. Before I get into that, let's talk about the toxicity of the apps fan wars usually happen on so you can get a feel for why the fan bases usually reside to these platforms to argue. TikTok has been a toxic place for a long time. Normal people even going as deep as what I'll be describing and saying these horrible things to creators. Twitter though. Twitter has been toxic since politicians started using it and since fandoms started fighting on there. Like TikTok. People say some nasty and scary things to one another since Twitter allows that. Twitter and TikTok are sort of safe places for people since these two won't care too much. All you need to do is censor the words and you can say whatever you want. 
As much as I hate to say it, it's true. Now getting into fan wars themselves, it gets ugly real quick. I have seen fans being racist, misogynistic, fatphobic, misandrists, transphobic, homophobic, etc. But it gets to be so much more than that. I'm not saying that those things I described aren't bad, but the things I've seen being said have been so vile. Rape threats, death threats, telling people to starve, joking about people's EDs, and using jump scares as a tactic to win whatever mess they started. This culture of fan wars is what I see most often rather than light-hearted ones one. Telling idols to starve, telling stands to starve, threatening a stand with rape, etc is so wrong. I don't understand the mentality some people have to think that saying this would slide. And two, it's not okay no matter who you are saying it to or about. I hate to be that person, but I'm going to be. If those people saying those things got the same energy back they'd be crying and sobbing to their mommy or in the corner of their room. Honestly I think people do it for the shock value rather than legitimately meaning it, which is why they would react this way if it happened to them. That isn't an excuse though, because it's still fucked up regardless of the intention. Remember, impact over intention, cultural appropriation, or CA, is a huge problem in the K-pop community. Black culture, DC culture, indigenous culture, Mexican culture, etc. have all been appropriated by people in the K-pop community. Korea has a history of racism and anti-blackness, and CA doesn't help their case. BTS, Blackpink, Shiny, etc. have all done CA. The non-POC fans are hell when it comes to this topic. They speak over POC stands in these situations and put the blame on stylists or the person for being quote-unquote overdramatic. Now this isn't just limited to non-POC stands because other POC K-pop stands do it too. Other POC stands put their opinions into situations that don't pertain to them. One situation I am going to be talking about is ex dinary heroes because I can. I am Mexican. Don't attack me. The boys used Dia de los Mutas as a stage setup and many Mexican stands wanted them to apologize. While that was happening, non-Mexican stands were calling us dramatic for wanting an apology from both Mnet and the boys and also blaming Mnet and Mnet solely. The boys also sang Happy Death Day, Happy Worst Day which when paired with the Day of the Dead theme makes it seem like a day all about how our relatives dying is bad. Like I said earlier, impact over intention, and so that applies to this situation. I can go on all the time about people not taking our problems seriously. I had a whole conversation about that, but for right now I am going to move on. Fan service, by definition, means fan service largely involves artists known as idols, reacting to their fans or act around their co-band members in a manner that is affectionate or lovable. This definition only applies to K-pop, so don't assume that it's the overall meaning. Anyways. Fan service can be seen as harmful to the queer community. This is believed because the idols are getting profit over kissing their same sex member on the cheek. Hugging. Fake kissing. ETC ETC which queer people struggle to do because of homophobia. I personally am split because while it may seem like a quote unquote stretch to say this, it isn't far off. Real queer idols are discriminated against. Meanwhile unlabeled slash straight idols profit off of it. People in Korea and even K-pop stands get weak knees over this idols who aren't openly queer or idols who do the same things that actual homosexual idols do. Yet the public opinion is negative towards these openly LGBTQ plus idols. Queerness is a very hit or miss topic in Korea. I'll link a video talking about it in the description. And the fact that these idols can use it as a way to get money is disappointing. The biggest part of this video yet is companies. It is nothing new for companies to debut groups. It's a normality in Korea. But what happens behind the scenes? Well a lot of things. Cynophobia. Slave contracts. Overworking. Extreme diets. And in some cases abuse. Cynophobia means anti-Chinese sentiment is a sentiment against China. Companies show their dislike for their Chinese idols in many ways. Rin Jun got told to move because they. And I quote. Can't have a Chinese center, left him out in the rain and drove back to the company without him, and have been forced to stop doing things when the Korean members were allowed to. Mm. Channel has gotten told to stop laughing on multiple occasions. Junhoo from 17 is possibly the worst case and let me describe why. Jun was forced to stay in another country from his members on tour because he didn't have a passport to enter the country they were going to while everyone else did. 
What I mean is that Pledis didn't fill out the papers for him to be able to enter that country. Once, the Chinese branch of Pledis posted Minghao and two other Chinese trainees, I think, but didn't care to post June. When his solo dropped, Pledis dropped a getting closer teaser the same day therefore pushing it out of the way, and so much more. This doesn't just happen to male idols, but I can't really think of a time this has happened to a female idol. Moving on to slave contract. They are very common even if you don't know it. Many popular groups had to sign slave contracts in order to debut, even if they seem like cool with their companies. These slave contracts are contracts to where companies are allowed to control every aspect of an idol's life. TRCNG were forced to be slaves for their company and sell their CEO's shoes while also being idols. I don't think they got breaks either. Overworking is when an person, in this case idol or group, is worked to the actual bone. Mark from NCT and Twice are two of the most popular cases of overworking. Mark is in three out of four of the said subunits in NCT and Twice released about six things in 2021 alone which is so messed up. Lastly, abuse since I went over the weight earlier. The one case I can think of that abuse happened is TRCNG. I'll link a Korea Boo article explaining all the things they went through but it's so messed up. K-pop is just such a fucked up industry and many people don't realize it. There shouldn't be a ton of videos on the mistreatment of idols. There shouldn't be trainees coming out against companies for the shit they've done. There shouldn't be idols and groups suing companies for the shady behavior they display. That will be all for today. I've had this in my drafts for a while but have mainly been focusing on the more simple videos for my channel. I decided that since I didn't have anything to post for this month, that I'd finish this script up and use it. Before I leave you, I'd like to say happy one year for CRKYN. Before CRKYN, I was called Jesus Filter and the Mktsen which is where I got my start. I found a passion for sharing my opinions and started posting on this channel with this video. While it is private now, I was proud of myself since I normally cannot sit for hours and edit. I then started posting randomly here and there but one day in November when I was staying home because I was sick. I posted my first video and committed to YouTube. While I haven't been able to post full time, I am still trying and will continue to try. I am late for my one year. Probably a week late. But I thought I'd say it nonetheless. Have a good day and I'll see you later.